Thank you guys for tuning in to a new episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Mark, Zach, Jared, and myself are here at the London House in Orlando, Florida. More specifically, the drawing room, which is a private cigar lounge. We're going to get a little tour here, talk about some of the things that the drawing room has to offer. We're going to be smoking some cigars, checking out their selection, talking about some of the history here of the London House. And we're also going to be heading to the bar and checking out some of the unique cocktails that they offer and their great whiskey and liquor selection as well. So stay tuned for that. Enjoy. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. We are here at another location, a very beautiful location that you're going to get to know and love. We are at the drawing room in Sand Lake, Dr. Phillips area. We're going to talk a bit about this place and the overall business as well. Of course, Mark is here with me. How are we doing? Being here, Mark. No problem. <laughs> and now I'd like to introduce Lauren, who's going to be talking more about the drawing room, the London house, and various other topics. Thank you so much for being here, Lauren. Yeah, you're so welcome. So glad to have you guys here this morning with us and get to take a little sneak peek into what it looks like over here at the drawing room. Absolutely, yeah. We've been here a few times. We've talked about you know some of the things that we're going to be doing with you guys. Uh, we love the drawing room. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a fantastic place. So give us a little bit of the background, you know, your history, when you guys started, how long you've been here doing yeah. all this. Absolutely. So we're, the drawing room is a separate cigar lounge that is a part of our larger private members club. So this is a part of the London House Private Members Club. And London House was actually uh, originally built and started in 2020. So an uh, interesting time to uh, have people out and about, but they actually found a lot of success in the fact that it was a private members club. So being a part of a, of a group, you're able to kind of have a say so in what it is that your club is doing. And for us, uh, with London House, ended up building as a part of a huge renovation project, uh, we ended up building a private separate cigar lounge. At London House, we had a lot of members who loved to smoke cigars and we had a huge outdoor patio area for them. But I think the plan was you know what, we can take this to the next level. Because that's what we're all about over here. We take everything to the next level. Mm -hmm. Everything is, is over the top and absolutely stunning. And I think that was the idea was we've got something that works and we've got a beautiful patio for members to smoke on, but I think we can take it up a notch. And so we did. So we opened in uh, January of this year, so 2024. And we've been open for a couple of months here. Our London House members have access to the drawing room side. And then we also have a drawing room membership, but we can chat about that in a minute. Okay, yeah, very nice. So the drawing room specifically, we'll talk about that yeah. first real quick. Obviously, you guys have a humidor full of cigars. Yes. Um, and you also have the full bar here as well with different types of whiskeys, different types of cocktails, you know, different liquors, all that. Mm -hmm. And then we also have, of course, the lockers, which are for members, of course. Yes. So um, a question about the lockers, mm -hmm. does each membership come with its own locker then? It's a great question. So we actually have a limited number of lockers. So the humidor lockers that are in their own separate humidor, um, we have a limited amount. So it is an upgrade to a mm -hmm. membership. So it's an additional cost per year and members are able to store their cigars and accessories in our humidor locker for that. Very nice. And can they bring cigars in from outside of the drawing room as well? Yes, absolutely. We are a private member club, as well as the fact that we have cigars here for purchase for our members in our retail humidor. We want our members to be happy, especially with whatever they feel like smoking that day. We want them, if they'd like, to bring in their own cigars and store them with us as well. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. And yeah, we'll show some videos too of the selection that they have uh, and the cigar humidor and the bar and then as well the different places that you could sit right now we're sitting in kind of like one of the main areas but there's different uh, private rooms too um, so can people just reserve those rooms whenever yeah absolutely so our, our members are able to join us uh, during our opening hours and we match the opening and closing hours of London House uh, and they are able to join us in one of these little, I like to call them vignettes. So they're kind of like these little like couch and table areas. And then we also have some semi-private rooms as well. Those can be reserved, but most of our members will just 
kind of walk in and they're like, oh, you know what? I actually want to you know, use one of the semi-private rooms today. They're able to do that. One of our semi-private rooms has a poker table that can be converted to a boardroom table. We've got a custom topper for it. Mm. Uh, so folks can get uh, their work done, client meetings done, and then enjoy a little bit of poker afterwards. So tell us a little bit about the London house itself. We've kind of discussed a bit about the drawing room, the actual yeah. cigar lounge. What exactly is London House? Yeah. So the easiest way that I can put it is we are a private members only club and similar to a country club where the focus is golf and tennis. Uh, we have a different focus, same concept, but different focus. Our focus is events. Our focus is the uh, high end dining that we do. Our focus is our networking that we're able to provide our focus is our cigar lounge the drawing room so we have a couple of different key features that differentiate us from other private clubs in the area that are not focused on all the luxuries of life gotcha yeah and then also uh, you have the bond room as well which yes. is something entirely different give us a brief rundown of what that is yes absolutely so we'll talk about this in another episode a little bit in deeper uh, but the bond room is a piece of our london house um, membership that is actually open to the public. It is a Friday and Saturday night only. Uh, it's our late night lounge. So we have a DJ, we have dancers, our Bond girls. We have an incredible uh, nightlife experience that we do on those Fridays and Saturday nights. We'll do themed parties twice a month for that. Uh, and we just, we have a lot of fun. So it's open to the, the public if they want to try it out uh, for a cover fee and they're able to come in on Friday and Saturday nights. Very nice, very nice. So how do I join the London House, the drawing room? Like, How do I get access to this beautiful cigar lounge? Yeah, absolutely. So you can chat with me. Um, I'm sure you guys will pop up my email and my sure. phone number. Anyone can reach out to me anytime. I'm happy to share pricing and give you a tour, welcome you to an upcoming event. Uh, that's the, the big thing is just having a conversation with me. I'm happy to share whatever works because some people, the drawing room is their, their focus. They're like, I just want a membership to the drawing room. I just want to be able to smoke my cigars, get mm. a little work done, have a client meeting. Perfect. We're the spot for that. So if you don't want to, you know, go to the London house at yeah. all, you can just have a membership here for yes. the drawing room. Yes. Okay. We have London house memberships that include drawing room membership. Mm -hmm. And then we have a drawing room only membership as well. So nice. we're able to provide what it is our members want. Yeah. Definitely take advantage of the tour that these guys give you. You can come check out the entire place. That's including the London house, bond room, the drawing room, get a feel for it. Kind of like dip your toe in the water. And then, of course, Lauren will give you more details on how to join and everything like that. But we're going to go ahead and bring John in. He's going to be talking to us more a bit about some cigars and what they do here at the drawing room as far as serving the members and the guests that come in. But Lauren, I want to thank you for hopping on here and sharing with us a little bit about this wonderful experience. We'll see you later. Absolutely. Sounds great, guys. All right, we are here with John. He is going to be showing us a little bit more about what the drawing room's about, uh, some of the history leading up to this point, and we're going to smoke some cigars. So, John, thanks for joining us. Welcome. Yeah, of course. I mean, first things first, we got to get these things lit up. I got there some you know. nice, yeah, appreciate that. Some nice bases for you guys. Bases cigars, huh? And you guys have these in the humidor here at the drawing room. We do. Uh, you know, I might be a little biased here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say that this might be the best <laughs> cigar you got in there. <laughs> you know, that's the that's the bonus to uh, being a private members club is if a member says, "Hey, I really like to smoke something," or "I really like to drink something," um, we do everything we can to bring it in. Oh, really? um, if there's a cigar that somebody really enjoys, I am constantly on the hunt for the best and. Uh, just trying to make everybody happy you know um, the cool thing is um, that freedom to kind of come in and and say hey John I really I really like X cigar I really like this brand can you get this in um, I just recently went out to Vegas <clears throat> to forge a bunch of relationships with houses uh, so I'm getting a lot of cigars direct from uh, manufacturer um, so we get those in, we get those in the house, put them in the humidor, and then uh, you know, it just allows for a better guest experience. Absolutely. So it sounds like you are kind of the one that's running the humidor. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Uh, myself and uh, Jamie Picardo, um, he's uh, also uh, kind of tag team it. Yeah. Um, he's our house sommelier. Um, so 
he's got uh, quite the nose for wine, but he's also got an incredible flavor palette when it comes to cigars as mm -hmm. well. Um, so I really lean heavily on his uh, his influence, but uh, I am I'm kind of boots on the ground. I talk to customers all the time, and I get to know what they enjoy and what they want to what they want to smoke, what they want to drink, and then I bring it in. Absolutely, I think it's great too that you guys go above and beyond. And like you said, if I want to bring a certain cigar, and this is what I smoke all the time, you'll make sure you do your best to bring that cigar in. And you said same with um, like let's say whiskeys or any of the liquors. Absolutely. If I can get it in, I, I try, you know, some of the, some of the big ticket items are always, uh, you know, there's some hoops you got to jump through, but that's what I'm here for. I gotcha. jump through hoops to get things in the door. Uh, we've got a really fantastic whiskey selection. Um, you know, it's pretty heavy with brown spirits, uh, in the drawing room. You know, you come over here, you want a cigar and you want a nice cognac or a whiskey or, a, or an aged tequila. Um, and I just try to get those in and keep the bar nice and well stocked. Interesting Absolutely. cocktails, you know. Yeah, you guys definitely have some interesting cocktails. We took a look at the menu. Um, what are like three of the go-to cocktails that you guys have here? Because there's some unique ones that you can't find anywhere else. So uh, I've actually got a really interesting um, barrel age program going on right now. Um, I've got a barrel aged old fashioned that I'm doing with Heaven's Door whiskey. I've got a, uh, it's a take on a Boulevardier. I call it the Cowboy Killer. Mm. Um, that's also a barrel aged uh, whiskey cocktail um, served with a flaming tobacco leaf. So I buy tobacco leaf in bulk, roll it up myself into little oh. cigarillos, and then we'll light that as we present, it, present the drink. Uh, and then another barrel, kind of an interesting thing that I haven't seen is uh, it's a barrel aged dirty martini. Hmm. Uh, so that's a gin, gin based cocktail, but it's, uh, I'm essentially making an old Tom gin because I'm barrel aging gin with a little bit of dry vermouth and saline solution. And that's, uh, that's an interesting one. Uh, we add olive juice to it afterwards, shake it. And then you get, you know, the notes from that barrel, you're going to, you're going to see, uh, you know, any, any sort of, uh, mellow oak notes, uh, some, some, uh, maybe even some vanilla you're going to get from that. It's, it's really a nice balanced cocktail. Yeah. The cocktails nice. here are definitely very, very good. We've had uh, a few to try and I think we're going to be experimenting a little later with some of the stuff that you guys offer, but to tell us a little bit about your experience. I know we talked about, you went to PCA in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Uh, was that your first time going to the PCA trade show? It was. Yeah, I was fortunate enough. Um, the uh, the ownership here uh, really wanted to expand my education. Um, and they sent myself and Jamie, who I mentioned earlier, um, out to Vegas for a weekend. Uh, and we spent three days smoking our way through the Las Vegas uh, Convention Center. Uh, it was a really, really nice time. Really learned a lot. And... Uh, you know, forged some relationships with people that kind of a brand new world for me, you know. Um, but in a very short period of time, I feel like I, get, I gained probably, you know, a semester's worth of knowledge about cigars that I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah. The good thing about the PCA is that you get to meet like the owners of the companies. Yeah. You know? It was really cool. I mean, I sat down with um, like Espinosa cigars, sat down with Eddie Espinosa and we like, just kind of shout the shit, you know? And that was really cool to just hear how passionate people are, you know? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a natural product that's being rolled up and the, the passion that goes into the blends, the passion that goes into like, hey, this was my father's or my grandfather's blend and I'm, I'm keeping this alive. That, that's really cool to me. I like the story behind the cigar. Absolutely, yeah. And and that's why you really like the basis. That's too. exactly why I like the basis. <laughs> we have heard some great feedback too from a few people that have already tried it. Um, uh, they have the Habano and the Maduro here. So we also, I know you guys have the um, United Cigars. You got their Atabe Humidor 
recently. I'm sure that was a part of being at PCA. You're able to make some of those connections there. That, uh, so that did not last long in house. That Atabay humidor wow. uh, was in the door and within probably about 24 hours, a member came and wow. said, I want that. And he, he <laughs> picked it up. Um, but that's, that's, you know, that's part of, that's part of the membership here. You, um, you get access to things that, yes, you could probably find it online. You know, you can, you can find those Atabay humidors online, but um, we offer it in-house. It's able to be picked up right now. You don't got to worry about shipping. I've already taken care of it. It's coming fully stocked. You know, all those cigars are going to be, uh, you know, checked. And then if there's any, ever anything wrong, you just come to me and we take care of it. Um, same thing with lighters. You know, we have a lot of ST DuPont stuff mm -hmm. in there. We've got uh, some really high-end uh, just accessories in general. And um, it's it's cool that we can offer that. Absolutely, you guys definitely do have a very high end um, collection of lighters that's there in the middle of the humidor. Um, what, and I wanna ask you a question too, what are some of your go-to cigars that you like to smoke, besides the basic cigar obviously, <laughs> but like two or three of your go-tos that you've been finding yourself enjoying a lot? Well, yeah, of course, the Besa. Um, that's that's been my go-to at home, actually. Uh, but I do like bringing back Espinosa. I love the Espinosa knuckle sandwich. Mm. Uh, the Sumatra wrapper is also really nice, but I, there's something about that knuckle sandwich. I I love it. I'll sit there and I'll smoke that in an afternoon. So that's actually a collaboration with Guy Fury. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I when I was sitting down with him, he was telling me that he was like, "I'm gonna bring Guy in." I was like, "Yeah, bring him in. Bring him into the club." <laughs> Which guy? Which guy? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, what else do I, uh, the smoke that's in there? I love uh, La Galera cigars. Mm. So the La Instructora is probably one of my favorites. Um, and then if I had to choose, wow, if I had to choose a third. Probably the Padron 50th anniversary. Oh yeah, that's a good one. You it's know, my favorite. With the, with the natural wrap. Or the Maduro, it depends. If it's after dinner, I'm gonna go with the Maduro. I think uh, Mark prefers the natural and I prefer the Maduro. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's it's all about the time of day. You know, if I'm having, if I just finished a steak dinner, I gotta go with the Maduro. Yeah, yeah for sure, yeah. yeah. So uh, speaking of La Guerrera cigars, I think you guys had an event with them recently, kind of like a cut and light event, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, and is this something that you guys do pretty often or you're working to do more cut and light events? Absolutely, yeah. I want to. Um, I really want to incorporate um, highlighting brands and allowing our members to do one-on-ones, kind of mimic what I did in Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. I want the brand to come in and give the member the experience that I got, where they get to sit down and hear those stories, hear the background. You know, they see the brands all the time. They'll go into a humidor and they see the labels and they see. You know, they see the boxes, they see the presentation, but they don't really know the story unless they take the time to research it themselves. But when you have somebody sitting there and saying, hey, I rolled this cigar because of X, Y, and Z, um, you know, this was my grandfather's blend. Like, that's that's cool. And our members get a lot out of that. Um, and, you know, it's it's something that they get to add to their repertoire, repertoire of things that they... Um, you know, the, the knowledge that they already have. Mm -hmm. Now that now they get to sit down with their friends and if they went to that event, they can say, hey, I know the story behind that cigar. You want yeah. me to tell you, you know, there's, it's always, it's a little bit of an ego game, right? Well, yeah, yeah. and it's definitely, uh, whenever you're able to talk with, let's say it's the owner or a very knowledgeable rep from the brand, mm -hmm. um, you're able to learn more than maybe you would have learned just by doing your own research. Mm -hmm. uh, but two, it's a little more personal for the consumer um, and a lot of times too, what we've seen, um, not just from events that we've done, but events that other brands have done is a lot of people will buy cigars from people that they like right. personally. So a lot of times, you know, the cigar might be pretty good, but, oh, I met, um, so-and-so from La Guerrero Cigars. He was a really cool guy. I'd love to support him. Mm -hmm. You know, let me get a couple sticks from him. So there's that aspect as well. We also have uh, kind of a cool element where we have some members who are bringing in cigars that they've 
cigar brands that they've started. Mm. Um, so you want to talk boutique, that's ultra boutique. Like they're being offered here. Um, they're, um, they, they're not necessarily trying to be in the big box stores. They're not necessarily trying to be um, really marketed big time, but they want a little bit of presence and they want to be in a high end place. So um, that's exciting too. And I'm looking forward to doing some uh, rolling events with those guys. Cause I think the ability for a, a member to talk to another member about their passion is really cool, mm -hmm. you know? Whether, whether it's business or if it's a side hustle or if it's just a passion project, yeah. it's like, that's cool. That's it, also a very, uh, very boutique and very private experience. I mean, if the brand is that small, you know, and it's more of this guy's hobby, mm -hmm. you're not going to get this experience anywhere else unless you're no. a part of the London house. No. The drawing room. No, I mean, finding fi this particular person I'm talking about, I mean, finding his cigars anywhere else is it's going to be hard, but if you're a member here, it's like, wow, I love his cigar and it's here in, it's here in London house. I know that I can get it at the drawing room, which Absolutely. is, which is pretty cool. Talk about, um, some other events that you guys do. I know you've had, um, a Derby event mm -hmm. this past couple of weeks, for example. So what are kind of the other events, maybe outside of cigar specific, uh, what else do you guys do? So, uh, we have, uh, Last time I counted, I they feel like we we're adding TVs all the time, but we've got uh, 14 TVs in here. Um, so wow, is that many? It's some. It, I, like I said, I think we add TVs all the time. I, I lose tra lose count. I'm losing track of remotes. But I will say real quick though, it, it's yeah. it's a, you've done a very well good job because you said 14. Like mm -hmm. I, I only noticed five sitting here. Yeah, you can't. It's tell. like they're they're very well placed. It doesn't right. look like a sports bar in here or anything. No. Uh, they have nice frames around them. It almost looks like it's just another painting or something like that. I mean, and speaking of frames and paintings, these are actual frame TVs behind you. I figured, yeah. Um, yeah. So they'll, they'll do just, I, the artwork that pops up on there is, cr it, like it looks like a canvas. Yeah. It's, it's Sometimes I walk in in the morning and I'll, I'll click them on before I put on, you know, a sports center or something and I'll just see a painting and I'll just stand there for five minutes <laughs> and look at it. Um, but yeah, we do, uh, we do have quite a bit of members. I mean, we're in, we're in Bay Hill, you know, so we've got a lot of members who come in and watch golf. Um, we definitely, when the Bay Hill invitation was going on, we had a lot of, uh, pro golfers that were interested in coming through. They did some tours. Um, but as far as those kinds of events, I mean, you know, in the past I ran a sports bar, so I, I do enjoy sports. I'm a big baseball guy. So uh, at any given time during the day, you might come in and see six different baseball games on. Uh, and that's usually, that's usually for my That's what you're doing. <laughs> uh, but uh, we just did a Kentucky Derby event um, where I organized some games for our members. We had a special menu going on. We had special cocktails going on. We had to do the mint julep. Oh yeah. You know, uh, and I brought in uh, a whiskey, um, a whiskey brand for that. So they came in, sponsored that, did a little education. We also had a cigar roller while the Kentucky Derby was going on. So got a little education while you're watching the horses run for those that minute and a half of excitement. And then there was prizes and games that we did as well. Um, but I love doing things like that outside of the box where it's not just, I mean, we already give, uh, you know, the utmost level of service when you come in. This is a high end cigar bar, right? But it is fun to kind of break out of it and be like, all right, let's, let's, cheer, for a, let's cheer for a team right loosen now. Up, and, you know, let's fun. loosen up, have a little fun. Um, it really brings the membership together too when you're all you know kind of competing mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and it is true i mean every time we've come in here it's been high level of service all of you have been very attentive and you make a mean cup of coffee too um mm. not just this french press but the cold brew here is something else we just drink that cold brew straight that's some good stuff yeah that's uh that's me getting into my mad scientist realm when i start doing all my all my tinctures back there but um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, it's a real fun atmosphere. It's a real fun time. Um, you know, I, I, I think that it's definitely a testament when you, when these doors are open, uh, in the morning, you will see people just stream in for that cup of coffee and that cigar and that, that game of golf or whatever's mm -hmm. going on. 
I will say too, you guys have some fantastic food here as well mm -hmm. that members take advantage of. You guys just brought in the sliders too. Mm -hmm. So sliders, you've got the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, the KFC, <laughs> which is kind of like a it's a Korean fried chicken. Yeah. Korean okay. fried chicken, the KFC. Yeah, we so we we have a snack menu on this side. Um, this will never be the full dining experience that London House is. Uh, London House has, um, you know, if you want that Michelin star dining experience, that's going to be at London House. But we do have an excellent snack menu over here. Um, sliders were just added. And they're Wagyu beef. I mean, it's not like you're yeah. getting something low end, uh, caramelized onions and blue cheese on that. Um, and the Korean fried chicken, that's, that's a staple at both, at both properties. So you get a little taste of that London house experience, but you're not going to get the, the Australian Wagyu gold wrapped tomahawk steak that you can get next door. Right. Um, you're not going to get the Dover sole table side special that you can get next door, but still that level of, of food. Uh, so we do have some cool events coming up. Uh, we're going to do something called Havana Nights here soon. That's going to be, um, I'm going to bring in a cigar roller. That's uh, to be determined who okay. I bring in for that. Um, and we'll do rum specials. We'll have uh, hopefully some, some entertainment going on as well. Um, everything that I try to do has some aspect of entertainment value, education value and then uh you know obviously just just drinking and smoking right you want to you want to smoke a good That's cigar amazing. and have a good cocktail you know um but we have uh we have a mccallan tasting coming up um that's going to be in june that's going to be tasting mccallans that you're not going to find at the store these are going to be ultra rare mccallans that'll be something that our members will really enjoy um coming in and hopefully getting our hands on maybe like a 1962 mccallan mm. you know something okay. like that something crazy something are you, are you crazy pair that with a cigar or are you just going to keep it separate um well i'll have mccallan here i'll have some brand rep reps here to discuss and talk and educate about that mccallan and why that mccallan is so rare and expensive and sought after. Um, but I'd be happy to make any sort of uh, cigar recommendation um, with that. I mean, honestly, you might just want to enjoy that McCallum and then have a cigar afterwards. But True. Yeah. Um, the, the, the certain level of McCallum that you guys are bringing in, mm -hmm. you might have a good point. I just want to Take a minute to enjoy this <laughs> yeah. and then bring in the cigar later. Bring in the cigar afterwards. But yeah, I think, I mean, there's really no better pairing than cigars and brown spirits, right? Of course not. Right. I would say coffee, maybe. Mm -hmm. But for sure, it rivals with whiskey. It's still brown. That's true. <laughs> Just not as strong. <laughs> um, what else do we have? You know, I've been, I've been toying with an idea, too, uh, that I think would be really cool is to do something um, like, a, like a New Orleans-style jazz fest. We have a... Um, we have a chef in the kitchen who uh, worked in New Orleans mm. at uh, Commander's Palace. Okay. I think it's Commander's Palace. One of those places. Commander's Palace. He's going to probably chew me out if, it's, if I'm wrong. But uh, he loves his, his New Orleans soul food. He loves, he loves Cajun-style cooking. I mean, we get along like peas and carrots because of that. And when I said jazz, jazz fest, his ears perked up. He's like, oh, yeah, let's do that. Crawfish, let's do a crawfish boil, etouffee, and jambalaya, and all that. I'm like, hey, man, I love that southern-style food. Let's do that. So it's, it's, um, it's really just coming up with a cool idea, talking to members. Hey, would you be interested in this? Or listening to members. A member might say, hey, I really want to do something for the 4th of July. We have something going on over at London House called the... Uh, blues and barbecue mm. that's coming up and that's that's basically just a member said i really want to see a barbecue happen cool let's let's see if we can organize this and here we are we're making it happen i will say too besides the fact that you guys are all you know attentive to your members and meeting their needs and all that it seems like you guys also really enjoy what you do and you're passionate about it which allows you guys to get more creative and come up with these great events 
that's what I'm hearing from you right now. Yeah, all of our staff um, has, they kind of reached an echelon in other avenues. Like they, they all were either management or high, uh, high, high level at their last employment. And they come to London House or the drawing room and they're like, wow, this is, this is the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, I mean, I was running a sports bar for a celebrity in Los Angeles. And when I started here, I was like, this is next level. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's hard to not love what you do when your ideas are taken so seriously and it's mm. like yeah we can we can do that you know in a, in a classic restaurant setting it's like mm, we might not there's be limits able to, there's a lot of limits here not so much it's like cool idea let's rock it let's see what happens go for it absolutely this yeah. place is definitely next level and john i want to appreciate you for sharing you know all this information about the drawing room what you guys are about we're going to go move to the bar here in a bit and talk some more enjoy uh some of the things that you guys offer over here on bar side. So Jared and I have moved to the bar. We're gonna come over here and taste test some of the drinks that they have. I know Cowboy Killer is gonna be one of them. Um, the other one, it's gonna be a secret for now. And then as soon as it's made, after we light our cigars, we're going to taste them out, let you know how they are. Which I know the Cowboy Kill is going to be fantastic. I know anything he makes is going to be fantastic. But So this is the Cowboy Killer. This uh -huh. is a barrel-aged uh, take on a Boulevardier. Um, I tend to shy away from sweet vermouth when I make classic cocktails. Um, I use Amaro's. So this is Amaro Nonino, uh, Campari, and Whistlepig Rye. This is actually our uh, drawing room blend of Whistlepig. We had um, members of our ownership go to Whistlepig and select barrels. Okay. So uh, this is our blend that was decided on, and we actually got a barrel from Whistlepig. Wow. So uh, this is the Cowboy Killer, served with a smoking tobacco leaf. These are uh, right. I use different wrapper leaves. Uh, from time to time. This is a Brazilian um, Foyano leaf. Yeah. Uh, of course. That's going to have a little spritz of Isla Scotch on top. Smells amazing. So you get the aroma from the tobacco. You get the Isla Scotch. And then you've got a nice barrel aged Boulevard. Fantastic. Day. Is it the Cowboy Killer? That's the Cowboy Killer. Would you guys like a light here? Yeah, I would love a light. And if you want to just take a couple draws there, I'll make sure that it's pulling properly for you. Wonderful. Thank you. Of course. All right, so tell us a little bit more about this. I think we talked about it. You talked about it with Alex and Mark. So that's, um, this is called the Cafecito Reposado. So it's Reposado Tequila, uh, Agave, Cold Brewed Espresso. So uh, I have a slow drip uh, cold brew tower over there. I uh, grind up espresso beans and then drip water over a period of anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. And then we get this nice rich espresso instead of doing a hot espresso. Um, it also has a little white chocolate liqueur in there. Um, a lot of cigars are gonna have cocoa nib flavors or dark chocolate flavors. So this kind of helps bring that out along with the coffee and then you can't go wrong with a reposado tequila and a little bit of uh, a little bit of cigar let's go ahead and taste it out mm -hmm. oh yeah that tequila goes really good with this would you like to try some absolutely yeah you know when you think of espresso martini you kind of don't think of tequila mm -hmm. um but with this it pairs beautifully you know it's a mixture of how is it? It's phenomenal. Yeah. You, you can barely taste tequila <laughs> at all. Tastes a little bit of the, uh, you can taste the chocolate for sure. Yeah, there's quite a bit of chocolate in there. Uh, well, actually, no, there's not, but it, it brings it out with oh, the yeah. cold brew. Yeah. But it's, um, yeah, it's a nice, you know, 
I was getting a lot of uh, members who were asking for espresso martinis, but I want it with tequila. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and uh, we had an espresso martini, or we, we still do have an espresso martini on the menu over at London House uh, that had vodka in it. So I was like, well, I'm listening to the membership, making a cocktail menu. They want tequila in their espresso martini. Why don't I just make a, a really well-balanced espresso martini on uh, over in the drawing room? So yeah. that's how this was born. Yeah, no, because, uh, I mean, we drink a lot of, like, old fashions, mm -hmm. and uh, there's, you know, we've had old fashions made with tequila, made with, you know, of course, whiskey, everything, scotches, um, but the thing is, if you don't manufacture a drink specifically made for, you know, that liquor, mm -hmm. like this, you specifically made with tequila, um, it never comes out right. So you could take an espresso martini and just put tequila instead of vodka, um, and, like, It'll be good, mm -hmm. but this is just fantastic. You know, the flavors tie in together well. Um, it pairs great with a cigar, too, especially in the morning. Yeah. Uh, you know, you watch an early game, drink it. It's so good, I'm going to have to taste it again, if you don't mind. <laughs> I definitely don't mind. I might mind, but... No, I mean, you, you did a fantastic job. Yeah, the agave, anytime, you want, anytime you're doing a tequila-based cocktail, I try and go with uh, an agave as the sweetener. And that white chocolate liqueur, um, I don't know what it is, but it just really pairs well. Yeah, it pairs well. You know, there's, there's caramel elements to reposado tequilas. Um, you know, there's uh, nice light flavors going on with a reposado tequila, so that white chocolate velvetiness just helps bring it all around. Yeah, I know these are only two of your, your drinks off the menu. I mean, you have an extensive, uh, you know, whiskey selection, bourbon selection, but just the cocktail menu, I mean, you have what, about 10 items, 12 items on there? Uh, with the addition of the barrel-aged cocktails, yeah, we're up to 10. 10? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's small but mighty. You know, you'll go places sometimes and there'll be 20 cocktails on the menu. Yeah. Uh, my thought process is do... do a few items really, really well yeah. instead of spreading yourself out and then maybe not executing as well on things. I mean, I will say though, I mean, the whole atmosphere of the London house and the drawing room, you know, it's all about perfection, right? So there's no reason that I see to have 20, 30 different cocktails on your menu um, and then to be, you know, mediocre. Yeah, you know, right. Like you said, you'd rather have 10 perfect ones, right. you know, that people love. Uh, which is a great mindset to have, you know. Yeah, the, with the, the barrel aged cocktails, you get a little bit more uniformity, right? You're every time you get that drink, you're going to have the exact same drink. It might get a little bit more character from the barrel. Like these these barrels uh, were done on April seventeenth, right? So every week you might try that, and it might get a little bit more oakiness from the wood. It might pull up a little bit more of the tannins from the wood, but basically. You're gonna have the same blend every single time you come in here, which is which is nice. If you really like something, it doesn't matter if you have it from bartender A or bartender B. You're gonna yeah. get the great cocktail that you know. Um, and, and you guys, you keep everything in the barrel, right? You don't age it for two weeks and then pull it out, or no, everything stays in the barrels. Yeah, see, that's fantastic because you get the tail end of it. You oh, get yeah. all the flavors from it. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. This uh, this old fashioned, I'm excited about as well. Um, that's every time, every time that's poured, it gets a little darker. It gets a little bit more, just more character to it. Yeah. And, and people are enjoying it. I mean, that, that old, that Boulevardier has been barrel aged for a couple months now and it's just really pulling yeah, it all together. Really good. Yeah. No wonder every time I come here and I order that, it gets better and better. <laughs> you know? It's true. I'm going to need you to come over to my house and just do it in my house too. <laughs> you know, I... People love to give me um, decanters as gifts, yeah. like the you know the crystal decanters. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I'm not like running a, a private eye service from the 1920s. <laughs> like, why do I need this decanter? And yeah, what I them. what I want, what I started doing is I started making cocktails at home and putting them in. Them. Yeah. yeah. So I have an old fashioned. I have a Manhattan that's just in a decanter, ready to go, which can be dangerous. Because then, because <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. It's easy to drink. <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> can be dangerous, but. Um, yeah, it really makes it nice when you're like, ah, I want an old fashioned, but I don't want to sit here and make all the accoutrements. I just want it right now. It's like, all right, there it is. 
Now, I do have a question, you know, uh, you have a lot of high-end, mm -hmm. you know, liquor here. Yeah. And, you know, I'm seeing Macallan, uh, what, 15, 18? Oh, okay. And in 30, and right And 30, 25, look and at that. The James Bond edition, we got Macallan M, we got Macallan 30. Uh, yeah, we, we definitely, we're pulling in quite a bit of Macallan. Um, anything, I mean, anything that is expressed to me, like, Hey, I, I really like this scotch. Can you get this in? Sure. I'll get it in. Uh, usually within that week, I'm going to have it behind the bar yeah. for you to enjoy. Um, most of these bottles have a member who drinks who it exclusively, it. Yeah. you know, there are, you know, obviously McAllen, McAllen stuff, anybody will drink McAllen. But there's certain bottles that I've only brought on because a member was like, I only drink Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. Yeah. I only drink Whistle Pig 21. Okay, let me get the Whistle Pig 21. That's him. He, he only me. drinks McCallan 18. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I, I, I tried all those McCallans besides the James Bond one, so I'll have to try that out. Yeah. This is uh, the 60th anniversary release. This is Volume 2. Um, so this came out this year. Last year was the Volume 1. Um, it's just 60th anniversary, nodding to the 1962 film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Doctor No. Right. And yeah, then, of course, in the house, we have a lot of James Bond uh, themed. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Stuff. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even cognacs. I mean, you have Louis XIII there. Uh, oh, yeah. La Classe Azul tequila. We have tequilas that are aged in cognac. We have the rare hair. Right here, Lapine, Codigo. So that's a extra añejo tequila that's aged in añejo or uh, sorry, cognac barrels. Um, and then I actually have the cognac that that tequila was aged in. So it was this. Oh, that's oh, wow. pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> nice. that's the cognac barrel there. Uh, and, and, you know, I bring on interesting stuff too. We've got orphan barrel products. Those are limited releases. They release once a year, and once they're done, they're done. So I try and bring those in yeah. so people can come in and taste taste rare whiskeys that maybe they're on the fence about. Like, yeah. oh, I want to bring that bottle for my home collection, but I'm not sure about it. Come in and try it first. Okay, yeah. now I want it. This would be a cool duo uh, doing like a you know two-for-one kind of drink. Oh, yeah. Uh, where it's like 50-50. You get to try, you know, the basis of this tequila. Yep. And then you try tequila to see if you can pick up the flavor notes. Yep, absolutely. You know, giving that's event cool. ideas out here. That's a uh, <laughs> <laughs> But, no, I mean, it's it's fantastic. The selection's great. Cocktails are amazing. Yep. So cool. Is this there... Is, uh, I like to say that this is member curated. I have a very small part in bringing this, bringing these on. It's it's more so just hey, like I said, the member says, "Hey, I really like this. Can you get this?" I'll sure try. Yeah, but I mean that's fantastic though because how many places you know? I mean in the Orlando area, right? There's no membership lounges, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is it. Yeah, and you guys over here have created a staple of it. So if someone even wanted to attempt it, you know, they would have to, you know, which I think would be impossible. They would have to do better than this right but the fact that you guys actually listen to your clientele you know you go to restaurants you go to you know even high-end places and you tell me you want mccallan 18 or you know the james bond mccallan mm -hmm. they'll be like okay yeah we'll look into it right. and they'll never look into it no matter if you go there seven days a week right they'll never bring it in um so the fact that you guys actually listen to your members you guys you know oh i want this within a week you're gonna get it oh, that's yeah. that's customer service i mean that's the amazing thing about it it's yeah it's it's customer service for sure but it's it's really just like forging you know forging an atmosphere where you feel comfortable we want you to come here this we want this to be your space when you walk in the door like yeah. this is your space your private members club you get to enjoy it and you want to you want the spirit you want you want the cigar you want we're going to get that in your hands when you sit down so this is the Whistle Pig single barrel rye tenure that we brought on for the drawing room. Um, you'll see that it's got a nice little certificate of authenticity there. Um, barrel number 88854 was ours. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we had uh, members of our ownership go and taste different blends of Whistle Pig. And this is what they 
after listening to the membership and seeing what our members enjoy when they drink whiskey, um, these are the flavor profiles they landed on. Uh, you'll notice uh, a lot of Whistle Pig is going to have some cinnamon flavoring to it. Um, that's just the American oak that they use. Okay. Um, up in Shoreham, Vermont. You're going to have. Cheers. Cheers. Obvious rye notes. It's going to be a little bit of heat at first. You're going to get that. Uh, That little bit, that spicy heat, followed by cinnamon, followed by maybe some caramel notes, maybe toasted marshmallow. Yeah, toasted marshmallow, caramel for sure. Yep. That's, uh, See, I'm picking up more of the spicy notes. So. Spicy for <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's a rye. It's going to, it's it's still spicy. Yeah. Um, and you feel through your nose a bit, right? The spice? Yeah, yeah. Bit. And Whistle Pig is, uh, they use Canadian rye. So it's got that, that big, bold Canadian spice to it. Yeah, it's fantastic that uh, you were able to, um, or they were able to pick out their own barrel so yeah. you guys could have beer. Uh, yeah, it's, we have we offer this as a, as a bottle package uh, at a discounted rate for our members too, so they can take a, a little bit of the drawing room home with them, um, and that's that's obviously a nice you know it makes a nice gift. You know, this is this yeah. is from my private club. Why don't you have a couple bottles of it? We have members who will take it home or take it to their, uh, for their employees at their companies. They'll take a case with them for, that's a good, that's a good boss right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to work for that company. Um, not that I'm in short supply of liquor. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, uh, yeah, they get a kick out of it and we'll do, we'll do events where we'll do, uh, like bottle engravings too. So, we actually have a whistle pick event coming up in July, and we will have a bottle engraver on site to do engraving. So if you want to do like, thank you for your hard work, um, or whatever, you know, yeah, great last yeah. quarter. Let's have another great quarter. Stuff like that. People get all sorts of crazy stuff engraved on their bottles. No, I mean it's it's a fantastic selection. Um, yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it'd be amazing to get that as a gift. So, um, you know, my birthday's coming up, by the way. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Well, guys, thank you for uh, thank you for enjoying the cocktails. No, thank you. Really good awesome. Yeah, thank you for us. yeah giving us a taste of the cocktails of the Whistle Pig uh, hand selected barrel. Oh, yeah. um, thank you for the you know hospitality you guys giving us. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of The Cigar Guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell if you like seeing stuff like this. We're going to be at the drawing room more often filming over here. Uh, we're going to put all of Lauren's contact information down below. So if you're interested in a membership, make sure to contact her. She'll give you guys a tour of the drawing room and the London house. Make sure you guys like it. Make sure you guys are interested in it. And make sure if you guys get a membership... You guys will be sitting with us, smoking a base of cigar in the drawing room. Thanks, guys.